بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد المرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد we are amongst the very fortunate people on earth to have been given quran and sunnah it is up to the people of iman to decide how much of these guidelines they want to follow in quran allah subhanahu wa speaks in detail about the ashab kahf id awal fitya ila al kahf when they sought refuge in the cave and they said rabbana atina min ladunka rahma o oh allah o oh our lord grant us mercy wa hay lana min amrina rashada and provide for us a right course in our affair facilitate for us in our matter in our affairs the correct the optimal way so these are youngsters that want to do preserve their iman they sought refuge they went away from the fitna they took the means and the asbab but they were not contented so with preparation preparing to get the help of allah to get the nusrat of allah to do the amal that will draw the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is of importance and priority wa hay lana and your allah shape for us the conduit for a correct for an optimal result so results are in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands but we need to draw that help and part of that is those youngsters never sit there they had yaqeen in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they never said they have tawakkul trust yeah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sort it out allah will resolve it no asbab wise means wise what needs to be done as mentioned in the hadith wa ma qadayta lana min qada'in faj'al aqibatahu rashada ya allah whatever you have decreed for us make its consequences positive make it good make it the best so preparation is in all aspects so when we say okay tawakkul and we ask the question it why with regards to your risk you don't make tawakkul tell your kids don't go to school don't go to university have tawakkul don't go to your shop don't go to your businesses why uh, struggle and strive also make tawakkul so why do we conveniently select when we need to make tawakkul and conveniently in other avenues when it suits us then we don't make tawakkul so likewise for our own protection for the preservation of deen for the preservation of our dunya we need to be making effort safeguarding iman is our responsibility safeguarding our honor is our responsibility safeguarding our chastity the chastity of our women folk and, and daughters and mothers is our responsibility a person that goes through a, a a victim a rape victim the the consequences the devastation the trauma cannot be fathomed so we shouldn't put our close ones in that position and if they ever get to that position they should know exactly what to do detailed but the question is again what is our priority what is my priorities what have i channeled my family's energies to what youth what progeny are we producing when we are so busy trying to amass wealth uh, preparing for our retirement when we don't know if we're going to live so long so have we have any direction in life i want to retire so i can be free won't you be free in the grave if that's a time where you'll be free so akhirat what what fitness have um engaged and uh, infiltrated the ummah something like drug drug abuse has come quite common muslim girls our daughters our sisters selling their bodies to feed the habit of addiction and where's the parents busy building the empires busy climbing the corporate ladders busy taking corporate takeovers 
Look at the divorce rate. How much it has spiked? Yesterday it was someone else's daughter. Today it can be ours. So we forget everybody else. I'm drowning in sin. What terbi of a child will a person make when he himself is, is engaged in guna to, to do the maximum? No stone unturned. So any person, the levels of sin have reached epidemic levels, pandemic levels. No, 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 no. It's worse than that. Incest, common, homosexuality in, 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 in the midst. So we need to wake up. We need to come out of this darkness. There was a doctor, and this is recently, put his patient on the ventilator. So he told him to call your wife and kids you don't know what can happen, etc. How long it's going to take. So he made the phone call. Then the doctor was going to put the ventilator. He said, no, i got a few things to do. What you need to do, I need to delete things from my cell phone. If I die, if I go and they find this, there's going to be big trouble. So we, we still, so many years of our life has passed. What darkness we are in. Look at Sabiat. What bravery, what valor. The youth of Sabao. What valor they demonstrated. Uh, uh, our women folk. Uh, experts in the art of putting different creams. Putting different forms of makeup. Tying their scarves. Um, in, in their job profile and portfolio. Are they good in their dunya? Or do they know how to defend their lives? We don't have a clue. Forget the women folk that are like butter and marshmallows. Even the men nowadays, they need their fancy cream, day cream, night cream, toner, lotion this year. They need their manicures, men, pedicures. They need their laser hair removals. We're not saying it's wrong. We're saying priorities. If you got your priorities right and you're doing that fine, no problem. So we, 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 we need to come out of this darkness. We don't even have a clue. Like a divorce court judge said to the husband, that sir, I have reviewed the case very carefully and decided to give your wife $800 a week. So the husband heard this and he said, that's very fair, your honor. That's very fair. Every now and then, I'll also try to send her a few bucks myself. Every now and then, I'll try to send her a few bucks myself. What the judge is talking in where you are. Two different worlds. Where the ummah should have been. Where the women of this ummah. Where the youth of the ummah. Where the men of this ummah should have been. And where we are. We are on different planes. We so far. Yet we got time to find fault with everybody else. Discuss and, and, and debate. We've forgotten ourselves. Like... Uh, Two friends were discussing problems in their marriages. So the one wife said, I'm going to get a divorce. She said, I'm going to get a divorce. And uh, I saw my husband yesterday going into a, a, a theater with another woman. So her friend said, but, uh, you know, maybe there could have been some proper, perfect, innocent explanation. Why didn't you just follow him into the cinema, investigate, verify, make sure, and uh, then come to this conclusion? So the lady said, the man I was with had already seen the movie, couldn't follow him. You so far, and you're talking about he's wrong, your husband is wrong. But you still discuss it. What darkness? Where is the woman gone? So we've drifted away from the topic, but being streetwise, part of that is when we leave our homes, uh, we need to get into vehicles. So vehicle security, vehicle safety is very important. And preparing. So we say in vehicle security, but how much as an individual do I know about it? We discuss about streetwise. Simple thing of carrying... A throw away money. So in a situation, it's very easy to access. You put a, a 20, 50, 100 dollar, whatever you think so you need to do, and put one dollar bills. So it looks like a 50, but there's a bundle. It looks like it's 50s. Throw the money. So prepping. Uh, how, how accessible is it when you leave a store, you're buying something, 
do you have your fancy uh, Armani, your fancy Louis Vuittons, Chanel? You're walking out from stores. You're already a target. Keep no-name brand bags. No problem, you buy buying that item, fold the bag, put the item in a cheap bag. So likewise, our vehicles as well, we drive cars, but have we done training with regards to that? So we're not talking about uh, training which has got to do with uh, the race tracks and high performance track driving courses. We talk, we're talking of basic skills which can benefit a person, whether it's skid pen, skid pen, car control courses, so when it's raining, etc., when the road is wet, then how do you drive? Hijack prevention courses, so these courses train a person of the different types of hijacking, what vehicles are hijacked, common types of vehicles, when being followed, common areas, uh, what to do if you are hijacked, uh, Sequences of just handling the car, holding the car, the seat belt removal, reacting, do's, don't, simple things. So control, observation, timing, positioning, ability to deal with uh, these unpredictable uh, situations. Advanced driving course, car control courses out there, where a person builds the skill sets of uh, braking, acceleration, etc. So. Tactical evasion skills, if a person comes to a roadblock where they block you off, what do you do? How do you get away when you come to a robot, safe distancing? So these are all skills which we need to learn. If you feel you are at risk in what type of vehicle should you get? Should you get an off-road vehicle, uh, an SUV, the best of both the worlds? Because you're going to have to drive off-road, you're going to go over pavements. Uh, a lower car, a normal car, the sum can be damaged. Your, 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 you're going to get stuck somewhere. You're going to put yourself in a, in a predicament. So basic things. You've decided, okay, SUV is the way to go. Some of the things which you can afford, what you can't afford, depend. Now, set a criteria, put a budget. Basic tent. Have you studied the, studied the different types of tents? Have you seen what tests they've done? Is it a real smash and grab? So from the basics of the basics, to going to armored vehicles. Oh, this person was kidnapped, so uh, we need to get an armored vehicle. Uh, all the family members need to buy an armored vehicle. But what's behind armored vehicles? Have you done the research? Have you done the homework? Have you got the skill sets to know what's the pros and cons of the armored vehicle? So uh, is speed important? Is safety important? Uh, you gave the armoring company. Have, have, have they done the necessary processes? Are you just trusting them or you done the homework? So you may be in a situation on a chase. Do you have the sirens? Uh, do you have the strobe lights? Where's the compromise point? A sunroof. You bought a vehicle with a sunroof. How do they armor a sunroof? A sunroof? And if they're going to armor it, what was the purpose of spending 20, 30,000? Uh, likewise, a vehicle in front of you, most armored vehicles don't have the radiator protected. So what level of protection do you need and, and what risk is it? Likewise, the engine, what type of engine, etc. Tail lights, compromise. Many vehicles don't uh, armor the tail lights where the bullet can penetrate. So what we're discussing now is just basics. We need to go to speak to the uh, experts. We need to ourselves get engaged into all these things. You've got the best armored vehicle, but your tires are not armored. So uh, you've compromised. In an impact, a normal armored vehicle, a normal vehicle has a safety feature where all the locks open up. So you should you, uh, install and override a second lock, magnetic dead balls, watch systems. You've done everything, but a simple feature. You rammed into them. The car opens up, they come to the door, pick up a person. Um, do you need ram bumpers? So uh, reinforcements from the front and the back. So if you need to ram through cars, you're not going to damage your engine. Your radiator is not vulnerable. You decided I'm going to go B4, B5, B6. 
what armored steel, what Kevlar are they using, and has it been tested? Are they doing shortcuts? So uh, don't just blindly accept everything. How many rounds goes through a certain a glass before that bullet penetrates? If they shoot the fuel tank, is it protected? If there's a situation where you need to duck, is there cameras where you can slowly drive away? Do you have thermal night vision cameras? There's, there's so many options. Uh, they come to the door. If you want to, if they expecting to surprise you, then you need to have 10 surprises in your pocket. Electrified door handles is an option. Uh, strobe lights, blinding strobe lights. At night, they come, switch on the lights, blind them. Um, intercom system, gas mask, they throw tear gas, they light the car on fire. You need to get away. So, uh, do you have gas masks for protection? Each vehicle should be fitted with uh, cameras to record the activity. So, even afterwards, if the vehicle is retrieved and a person is kidnapped, there is footage to go by, there's faces. So simple things can save many lives. And it's not only thinking about yourself, because these syndicates are the same people. If it's the extraction team, then they are hired hands. So uh, uh, loop, loop the, the weakness. Likewise, maybe you travel and there's no data. You're using the normal cell phone uh, uh, GPS. How you get away? Are you relying on that only? You've armored the vehicle, but uh, you haven't seen the weight. You've gone with the B6. Can the suspension handle the weight? The engine power, can it carry the load? If there's a need, you, ca you can get add-ons, pepper spray dispensers. In a situation, electromagnetic pulse protection, where the entire EMPs will disable the entire electrical systems of the vehicle. Uh, never put that past them. So you, you, you can have that. There's, there's no limit to safety. We've done our amal, we've done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, each person based on their budget and situation needs to study the different protocols. Some people do all the protocols, but you in that vehicle, your life is at risk. It can be a normal accident, the car catches on fire. Is there any emergency exit protocol? So, um, an escape hatch, so to understand it first, firefighting equipment, uh, tear gas canisters, the, 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 the possibilities are endless, but it is up to a person now to do the research and see. I mean, presidential vehicles come with uh, automatic firefighting system which automatically triggers um, smoke screen dispensers, tear gas dispensers, oil slicks. So the sky is the limit, but each person should see in their environment. We've, we've just gone into basic things. Uh, there's so much detail that, that, that a person needs to see. So vehicle safety, likewise, before even a person gets into the vehicle, uh, are you in the habit of leaving your tank till quarter, till reserve? Have you ever checked the oil, the battery, the life of the battery, the water, the tires, the, um, your screen could get uh, soiled? You have to drive through a situation. Have you put uh, the normal liquid, do you have some dispensing liquid to clean the screen? So, Procedures before you get into a vehicle. Likewise, let's say a person is traveling and you go to a fuel station. So it's simply you fill in fuel, but that's a vulnerable point. So are you using the same uh, petrol stations? Uh, when you get in, which direction are you facing? So if you see any vehicles that are at risk, um, if if fuel is being filled, what what readiness do you have to take off? What protocols do you have in place? Or do you think so it's a moment to catch up on your cell phone, to catch up on your notes, etc.? No, these are vulnerable points. So you planned your route, you planned alternatives, you've planned a petrol station. 
in a breakdown normally I will ask you your your win number have you got that ready um, what uh, breakdown services are you affiliated to how fast can they get to you if there's an ambulance service which ambulance service are on route if you get stuck and you cannot travel then uh, uber a taxi service which taxi services are available in that situation are you picking up hitchhikers etc it can be a trap so a believer is always vigilant may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the feek of making amal the amal for today is to practice on Quran and Sunnah man akala tayyiban whoever eats pure wholesome food wa amila fi sunnatin and they ever stay desirous to practice on every Sunnah wa amina nasu bawa'iqahu and people are protected from his evil and mischief دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ This is a jannati. Uh, Sahaba said إِنَّ هَذَا فِي أُمَّتِكَ كَثِيرٌ Then there'll be a lot of people in your ummah. Nabi alayhi salam ribal was yakunu fi qawmin ba'di Yes, after me also there'll be many people like this. But we find nowadays people are very far from eating wholesome food, uh, practicing on sunnah and nobody is safe from their masjaf wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi